Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is James Birchall, Community Relations and Issues Specialist, Go Expansion in Toronto East for Metrolinx. Metrolinx is a provincially led transit agency where we not only provide products and services such as Go Transit, Up Express, and Presto. We are building an integrated transit network to meet the growing needs of today and tomorrow. I'd like to welcome everyone to this meeting and where we will present on the upcoming need to relocate Scarborough Centre Go Bus platforms. As many of you know, may know, the Scarborough Rapid Rapid Transit or SRT will be ending in 2023. Go Transit has been asked to vacate the station at Scarborough Centre to make room for the extra buses that will be needed. As moderator, it is my my actual job to keep the event on time to ensure that 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 questions are answered as as best as possible and to make sure that many questions are answered as possible. And again, I thank you for being here with us and for sharing your actual interest. An important note, this meeting is closed captioned. To use this, we ask you to kindly click on the CC, CC button at the bottom right side of your screen. Our event has been set up to allow for as many opportunities for, our, for actual questions and for feedback. As you will see, there is a mechanism for you to type in a question, which also allows others that are in the Zoom room to vote on that actual question. As great minds think alike, we often see many of the same question. To avoid reading and answering the same one over and over again, we kindly ask that you scroll through the actual questions that have been already posted, click on them so they will move up. We have scheduled this actual session to last about an hour and a half. There will be a pre. Uh, there will be a very. There will be a brief slideshow, and then there will be an opportunity for us to take as many of your questions as possible. For the for part of the panel Q and A, I will be turning over the Zoom room to Senior Manager Community Engagement Toronto East, Mr. David Felp who will be leading us through those actual questions. Should you have another question or need, need actual clarity, or if there wasn't time to get to your, your actual question, please be assured that we will ensure that every question is answered through Metrolinks and Gauge site. As well, some of your questions that we cannot answer, for instance, questions that include specific issues, service related items, or are on topics of confidential nature, they will not be entertained in this forum, but those who are impacted will be. Uh, will have the opportunity. At the start of our meetings, we do a land acknowledgement. So at this time, I would like to call upon my colleague, Nigel Sandy, Community Relations and Issues Specialist for the Scarborough Subway Extension, to read that for us now. Nigel? Thank you for the introduction, James. Uh, and as he was mentioning, Metrolink is involved in many different infrastructure projects that connect municipalities within the GTA with transit. 
Uh, it's important as these developments continue that we recognize the groups who lived on these lands first. Uh, Metrolinx acknowledges that it operates on the traditional territory of indigenous people, including the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples. For the purposes of this meeting, we would like to acknowledge the Mississaugas, including the Mississaugas of Credit First Nation, Williams Treaty First Nation, and recognize the lands covered by the Gunshot Treaty in 1788 and the Williams Treaty's territory. Metrolinx is committed to building meaningful relationships with Indigenous peoples and to working towards meaningful reconciliation with the original caretakers of this land. Thank you very much, Nigel. What normally follows for our meetings is for us to share a safety moment. Safety is Metrolink's first overall priority, so we start every meeting with this. Tonight, I'd like to bring the safety, safety moment home from Scarborough. The, Toronto the, the Scarborough Town Centre is an area full of lovely, lovely trees, which are presently losing their actual leaves. In all their, in all their beauty, they do pose a safety hazard to those walking and for motorists, especially when wet un underfoot. Please take the extra caution when moving through the area, especially as our evenings grow longer. Again, before I start into introducing our, our speakers and actual panelists, I'd like to bring forward again, this event is closed captioned and to enable that actual feature, kindly click on the CC caption that's at the bottom right side of your screen. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panel. Anne-Marie Chung, Rapid, Rapid Transit Sponsor. Ulrico Ho, Senior Advisor, Rapid Transit Program Sponsor. Jenny Matharu, Program Sponsor, Line 2 East Extension. Alexander Takarab, Senior Transport, Senior Transportation Planner Project, Development and Planning. Ben Morrell, Transportation Planning, City Planning. David Felp, Senior Manager, Community Engagement, Go Expansion, and who will be your moderator for the Zoom room. Zoom room. Before, we, before we continue this, I would like to take the opportunity and the privilege to introduce Deputy Mayor, Councillor Michael, <coughs> excuse me, Thompson, to say a few words. Sir? Thank you very much, uh, James, and good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be a part of the conversation in this meeting. I'm looking forward to hear the great things that uh, the folks from Metrolinx have in store for us. I know we've had some site meetings in the community to discuss the overview in terms of the discussion with respect to the relocation of the, the, uh, the bus uh, terminal area and so on. I think it's really important for us to be able to communicate with you and uh, the folks at Metrolinx have um, certainly agreed and, and, and knowing full well the importance of transit and the integration of it um, are here to provide you with an update as to what they're planning for our community. This is a great opportunity for you as members of the community to ask your questions as James has indicated. There's a panel of experts who are here I've had the pleasure of meeting with a number of them and to discuss uh, the intention and the objective of uh, Go Transit and, of course, Metrolinx, who's the operator of Go Transit. We are all the beneficiary of better transit, and this is all part of that movement in our city and certainly beyond in our region, quite frankly. And so this is a great opportunity for us to discuss this, uh, the, 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 the location of the the bus terminal in essence and the recognition as to the need to move it and how that will impact our community. I know that some residents have informed me that while well, they don't take Go Transit, that may be so, but some do. At the end of the day though, 
things are always changing and the evolution and the changes that are being brought forward by transiting in integration is extremely important. So this is a great opportunity for members of the community to be able to speak with the panelists and to ask questions and to get those questions uh, answered. And as uh, James has mentioned, there might be some questions that they may not be able to answer at this particular meeting, but I'm hoping that uh, as we move forward, we'll be able to get those. So I'm looking forward to hearing from members of the community, as well as to hearing from the panel and so on. And I may offer some uh, thoughts a little bit later. So thank you very much for including me in this meeting. And I welcome you to the community. Back to you, James. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you very much. And with those comments, I'd like to start the presentation by passing the screen over to Anne Marie. Anne Marie, it is all yours. Thank you, James. So tonight, uh, as was mentioned, we're here to discuss the proposed GO bus relocation at Scarborough Centre and provide you more information on the transit projects happening in your neighbourhood. With respect to the GO bus relocation, GO buses will no longer operate at the Scarborough Centre terminal, uh, represented here by the Red Star as of fall of 2022. Instead, we are looking to relocate uh, on, to a new on-street GO transit stop proposed in the area outlined in the blue box. So that's Borough Drive between Progress Avenue to the north and Triton Road to the south. Uh, Metrolinx right now is seeking your feedback on the proposed GO bus location tonight. So thank you for your time. Um, this relocation is being coordinated with other transit projects in the area including, um, as mentioned, the TTC will be decommissioning the SRT Line 3 in 2023 and replacing it with bus service. And so, as well, the Scarborough subway extension, which includes the future Scarborough Centre terminal, represented by this yellow star. So my colleagues AJ from the TTC and Jenny will provide more information on the two projects tonight. Next slide. So today, Go Bus and its intercity buses currently operate out of, of the existing TTC Scarborough Centre station. Um, again, we'll be looking to relocate in fall of 2022 in coordination with the TTC. Uh, Go Bus must look for an alternative location so we, we can operate um, uh, out of the area. Uh, this location is going to serve as a temporary location between fall to 2030. So it's about eight years um, until the new permanent bus terminal is constructed as part of the sub Scarborough subway extension project. It's anticipated to open in 2030. Okay, if you could, next slide, please. So just in terms of what's happening in that area today and the GO bus service, um, Go Transit buses have been serving Scarborough Center since 1987. Uh, we have over 140,000 total boardings in 2019, with an average of about 500 daily boardings at this location. So it's a very important location for Go Transit and transit users who live in the area and who visit the area. It's actually one of the busiest stations on the Go Bus network, providing important connections to employment, education, and key destinations. Currently, right now, we operate around um, 5 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. on weekdays and 6.30 a.m. to 1.15 a.m. on weekends. Um, in the short term, uh, the GO bus service levels are not anticipated to change at this location. Next slide. So just in terms of just the importance of it, you know, approximately 30% of the GO customers who arrive at Scarborough Center today go directly to the mall or the local area itself. Um, about 50%, 56% actually, um, actually transfer onto the TTC. Um, and a lot of them, you know, they provide access to those who, you know, commute to work, to school, to the mall, and of course the local destinations. It remains a vital transit connection. So now I'll hand it over to my colleague, AJ from the TTC, who could speak more to what's happening at Scarborough Center and the SRT. Over to you, AJ. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so, yes, uh, as part of um, TTC's board approved plan, we will be shutting down the um, existing Line 3 trains uh, sometime in fall or late in 2023. 
And uh, after that occurs, um, until the Line 2 extension is complete, we'll be operating a replacement bus service. And uh, right now, um, we're going through our last round of consultation of, for um, seeking feedback on how exactly we should be operating that service. And you can see that uh, right now, three different options are under consideration. Um, and uh, right now, we're recommending the reuse of uh, the existing SRT right-of-way. Um, the, uh, there's an existing uh, consultation effort underway, and we just wrapped up um, some in-station pop-ups along uh, the SRT corridor, which were conducted over the last week or so. Um, so with that, I guess I'll pass it off to Jenny Mathru, who will provide comments on the Line 3, or Line 2 East extension. So you'll hear Line 2 and Scarborough Subway extension interchangeably. They are the same project. Um, so as part of the SSC, there will be uh, three new stations. Uh, there will be one at Lawrence and McAllen. There'll be one at Scarborough Center, and there will be one at, Scar at Shepherd and McAllen. The station at Scarborough Center will be about 500 meters of the existing, 500 meters east of the existing um, SRT uh, Scarborough Center station. Um, it is, uh, as Anne Marie indicated, it was highlighted with that yellow star. It's going to be on the east side of McAllen. Uh, the targeted date of in-service is 2029-2030. Um, it, um, it is a project that's being delivered by two contracts, and we did this strategically to make sure we're to, to be able to deliver um, by that targeted in-service date. Um, so our first contract is the tunneling contract, and we are actively uh, constructing an extraction shaft uh, at uh, Shepherd and McCowan. That's where we will be starting. Um, for a tunnel boring machine, and I'll, I'll speak to it in a couple of slides, but for it to mobilize from there and then travel south uh, to construct the actual subway tunnel. The, we did award the contract in May, um, and the other contract is the station's rail and systems contract. This is uh, often the more exciting one that involves station design. This contract is currently in the procurement phase. It's in market. We have issued a request for qualifications uh, and hoping for that to close in November. And I'll talk to some of the milestones in the next slide. And as part of um, the first contract, which is the tunneling contract, um, it's going to involve the actual tunnel boring machine, um, boring through the ground to construct the, 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 to construct the actual tunnel. It will involve precast tunnel liners as well as um, things that are called headwalls, which are support, um, which are underground support structures that are essentially going to be creating the frame of the subway stations and the emergency exit buildings um, that will be part of the subsequent uh, contract. Next slide. So this is um, a little blurry to me, but I hope you guys can see. I hope everybody can see it clearly, but. This is really an overview of the, the timeline as to where we are in the process. As I mentioned, it's a three-stop extension. We are, um, we are right in between sort of um, the spring 2021 contract one being awarded, which was the, the tunneling contract, and winter 2022, which is the RFP, um, which is the request for proposals being issued for the station's rail and systems contract. So right, we're right in the middle there um, with the request for qualifications phase. Um, and so I meant, as I mentioned, in winter of 2022, we are looking to narrow the candidate pool. Um, and then from there, we are looking to work with a partner uh, to advance the design efforts and begin advancing works in spring 2023. Next slide. So this is the exciting stuff to show that it's happening. Uh, this is uh, the first picture at the top. You'll see a big hole. This is the launch shaft site um, at Shepherd and McCowan. So it's very exciting. I'm going to promote the project a little bit here, but if you go to the site, there are viewing um, panels that you can actually go and take a look to see what's actually happening there. Um, so this is the extraction shaft that I mentioned earlier. Um, it did start, we did start excavation um, a few, a couple of weeks ago, and they've made, they're about one third of the way through. 
they will be excavating to about a 28 meter depth. Um, the next stage is sort of getting the TBM, the tunnel boring machine on site. It is being manufactured abroad in Germany in a small town. And then it's gonna make its way over the Atlantic um, to Canada. And we're hoping for it to arrive in spring 2022 and assembly, um, it'll be arriving and assembled on site in, in spring 2022. It is going to be operating approximately 35 meters underground. It's going to be operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it moves about 10 meters per day. We are actively um, soliciting names for our tunnel boring machine, both for not just the Scarborough project, but the Eglinton West extension as well. Um, and that did launch on October the 19th, 2021. So that's the SSC. Uh, next slide, I'm gonna pass it back. I'm gonna pass it on to Eureka. Thanks very much. So in the following segments of this presentation, what we hope to do is to walk through what um, is being proposed as part of the project and then what it looks like for transit users, for residents, local business owners and visitors to the area. So on the screen right now, you're going to see a bird's eye view of the proposed location and the approximate area. In blue, again, is the proposed location on Borough Drive between Progress to the North and Triton Road to the South. To give a little bit more context of the area, we do have and recognize the residential uh, properties to the south along Borough Drive. There's condo towers, there's townhomes, um, and then there's also, of course, the Scarborough Town Center Mall in the center of the map as well. Local landmarks include um, the cinema at the top segment, and then also uh, Scarborough Civic Center and Albert Camel Square in the lower middle segment of the photo as well. In selecting the proposed location, a number of local site context and considerations were definitely examined. These include uh, traffic volumes and flow, pedestrian traffic volumes and flow, customer experience, so wanting to provide um, close proximity to the terminal and to local bus connections thinking about things like customer amenities and where we can locate and find spaces for bus shelters, for wayfinding and navigation. Um, thinking about also things like uh, site context compatibility, um, limiting as much as possible the impacts to residents and businesses, coordinating with uh, area works and projects such as Scarborough um, subway extension, and also thinking about operational feasibility and routing. So a bit of the local context as well as the operating context. In terms of benefits to this location, key factors include the fact that there are three uh, bus TTC uh, stops within the vicinity, and these are circled in the coral color. And these are about uh, 50 to 250 meters from the proposed location. So a short distance of a walk, about one to three minutes. Um, in addition to that, key benefits also include uh, proximity to the station and having a very clear sight line to the station. So for anyone wishing to go to the mall or to transfer to local services, that wayfinding perspective is very clear. Thank you, and to the next slide, please. Great. So what we see on screen and in the following segments is a more localized walkthrough of Borough Drive. Today, what we see, and this is uh, looking northbound, is Borough Drive. Um, we have in the following slides, please. Um, northbound, so what we have is two, um, two directions, uh, two local general traffic lanes and those transition into three lanes as we go from south to north on Borough Drive. These lanes are two dedicated left turn lanes and one dedicated right turn lane. Notably, the intersection here is uh, stoffic, is uh, stop controlled and the posted speed is 40 kilometers an hour. And on to the next slide. We'll be focusing then on the southbound, so looking from uh, progress onto Triton Road. On the next slide, we will see the existing condition of Borough Drive. So this is similarly two lanes for general traffic with a dedicated left turn lane, um, and that is shown on the right image of the picture. Posted speed is consistent at 40 kilometers an hour. 
Thank you. And next slide, please. Great. And so walking through what is proposed as part of this project, what we're suggesting is six on street bus bays located on the east side of Borough Drive. So between Progress and Triton, we're suggesting to um, put in customer infrastructure where possible, working with the local landowners and with the city to include items like uh, shelters for customers, benches, additional lighting and trash receptacles. Um, additional detailed design will help us dictate and determine where these facilities could be located. From a transit connectivity and transfer perspective, I'm highlighting again the three local stops. So we have TTC stop um, 3349, and this is on Borough Drive at Progress Avenue on the south side. This is serviced by TTC routes 43B Kennedy, traveling northbound. We have TTC stop 1612. This is located on Triton Road at Brimley, serviced by TTC routes 21 B and C on Brimley, traveling southbound, and also serviced by uh, TTC Route 43 Kennedy, traveling southbound to Kennedy Station. Lastly, we have TTC stop 1613, and this is serviced by TTC routes 21A and 21C, Brimley, traveling northbound to uh, Scarborough Centre Station. Next slide, please. Great, so on this map, what you will also see is the proposed pedestrian walkways to get to the TTC stops. And these are outlined in the dotted yellow lines on the map. Um, again, the proximity to these stops are about 70 meters up to 250 meters to the mall and to the terminal. So about a one to three minute walk. Transfers again are to 21 Brimley and to 43 Kennedy TTC routes. Should pedestrians wish to access the um, TTC uh, connection above grade, there is uh, a connection on Brian's, Brian Harrison Way, and this will continue to be operated and serviced by the TTC. Next slide, please. In determining this location and studying it a bit further, Metrolinks did perform a traffic analysis to understand any potential implications and impacts to the network and to the local area. In general, what we found was that the additional of um, 12 buses per hour, so thinking about more of a 2031 uh, planned frequency, had very minimal impact to the local tra traffic and to the traffic operations. What is notable is that the intersection at Borough Drive at Progress Road, so uh, northbound on this map here shown, is a two-way stop controlled intersection. What we see at this intersection is that there may be some um, delays here. And as a mitigation measure, what Metrolinx is suggesting is that there is an opportunity to investigate signalization of this intersection. And we'll be doing that as a next step. Next slide, please. Thanks. And so as we uh, take a more detailed look of what operations look like for transit users and for residents, Again, the six bus bays on the east side of Borough Drive will be maintaining our existing service levels at a minimum at a near time for our customer base. So looking to provide the connections that you see today and maintaining that as we continue to grow and um, to meet customer demands in the near future, what we will look to do with Metrolinx is to continue planning for that service and meeting those demands. Given the fact that um, we'll be maintaining our existing service levels, we do see and anticipate very minimum impact to greenhouse gas emissions and noise uh, over the existing conditions. Um, as we had spoken to the traffic analysis before, we'll continue to uh, study further the detailed impacts of the Borough Drive and Progress Avenue intersection. Additional details about the project, including uh, design aspects and customer infrastructure location will be determined in detailed design. Next slide, please. What we've heard so far from the community, and thank you for your feedback today and ongoing uh, commitments to, to this project and your support, uh, we had heard inquiries related to customer infrastructure. So if it would be available within this location and where it might be placed. 
things like shelters and electronic display board signs. To that point, we'll continue to investigate uh, through detailed design, wanting to provide additional um, and meeting our, our customer amenities as much as possible. We had also heard from customers how they could continue to transfer to the TTC and to the local bus network. To that point, we will um, addition, we will continue to advocate for the three localized bus stops within the vicinity, and those provide uh, very easy access points to the TTC 21 and 43 routes and two connections to the Scarborough Centre station. What we had also heard from uh, local transit users and the community um, was whether or not we had considered uh, proposing an east side stop location to, to Scarborough Town Centre. A number of stop locations were considered as part of our project and in an effort to provide maximum customer amenities, connections, and to facilitate operational needs, including the desire to facilitate and coordinate with additional and adjacent projects. Um, this current location is being proposed and being suggested to maximize those benefits. Next slide, please. Great, so in terms of what we're looking to do as our next steps and as the project timeline, we'll be looking to coordinate with the area works, working with also the City of Toronto to obtain the necessary City Council approvals for this project. Uh, from there, looking at about a summer 2022 construction timeline uh, to begin construction for this project to ensure that we're in service for fall of 2022. From there, operating between fall of 2022 up to 2030 when the SSC project opens and when the permanent home for GoBus will then be placed. It is key for Metrolinx to continue to provide service to this pivotal location and to service its residents and customers at Scarborough Centre. We continue to uh, receive your feedback and welcome your feedback as part of this project and as part of ongoing projects. Thank you. And back over to you, James. Thank you very much. That was an amazing slide deck and a lot of information. I thought perhaps before we uh, bring in the Zoom room, actual questions or any of the questions that we may have received already, I thought I would extend an invitation to you, sir, if you have any questions that you'd like to bring forward to the councillor would you have any questions sir that you would like to have thank you james i have no questions at this time um I, i'm pleased though that uh some of the comments that i made on our walkthrough have been considered and incorporated in the presentation but i have no questions right at this moment i will uh maintain uh, the opportunity should I have any going forward. Thank you, I wanna hear from the residents. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Um, so I will uh, extend to the Zoom room, should there be any, any questions that uh, have actually populated? Hi, I've got uh, Nancy on the phone. Nancy, did you have a question? Oh, hi, thanks everybody. I just wanted to clarify if this is only affecting go bus businesses or if the the TTC will still maintain their own buses from the Scarborough Centre to replace the LRT. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks. I will uh, ask um, Alexander to actually comment there. Sure, thank you very much uh, for the question. I think I might have missed just the, the front of it. So um, just to clarify, I think your question was, um, asking whether TTC will continue to maintain service from Scarborough Centre yes. Station, is that correct? Yes. Yes, so um, that's actually why we've asked uh, Go Transit to relocate their services because um, as part of our plan to make sure that we're continuing to deliver service uh, as high a quality as we can um, until the subway is ready, but the SRT uh, has to be retired, uh, we'll be using our entire Scarborough Centre bus terminal, including the area that GO 
uh, is currently occupying to operate buses. So we're going to have even more buses through there than we do today. Thank you. Do we have any other other questions there, David? Kelly, did you have a question for us this evening? Oh, hi, no, um, it's Kelly from the City of Toronto Planning. I'm just here to listen to the presentation and hear the questions. So I'm here as a resource should uh, any questions pop up that require city planning input. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, with Please that, I've got, okay, um, thank you. If, with that, um, uh, I'm gonna uh, turn to Hayden. I think he's got a couple of questions. Yes, hello, I, I'm Hayden. Um, I'm sitting here, I'm applying for Martin University. So, um, so I actually wanna ask for the Go bus. Um, there's currently two on-street bus stop on, on McCowan Road. Is, is, is it the intention to continue operating? via those stops. Hi there, yes. The intention is the routine service at those stops. Yes, and then a further question is, um, how is the go bus gonna be route in Scarborough Town Center to, to and from the bus terminal and bus stop? It seems to me that, it has to turn so many times just to get to the bus terminal, the, the, the proposed bus space. Can you describe how it is going to be routed? Eureka, would you like to take that one? Yep, thanks for your question, Hayden. Uh, certainly. So with regards to the routing, it would be similar as it is today as we off-ramp westbound and eastbound. What you're going to see as differences is that we'll be traveling along Triton as we do today, but from Triton uh, for westbound buses, we'll then go north onto Borough Drive to access the platform. From there, we'll have to uh, continue um, on Borough Drive north to Progress and then making a left to Progress to uh, Brimley and then back onto the 401. For any of the eastbound buses, what we're going to see is uh, traveling from south on Brimley and then a left onto Triton. So an additional left on the route. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have we answered other questions, sir? Um, I've got uh, one. Uh, we may come back to Hayden. I think he might have another question, but before we do, uh, Murad, I'll just unmute you now. Yes, yeah, so I'm also here from the City of Toronto, just taking the notes, what the colleagues are asking, so that we have to incorporate it into our design. Yeah. Thanks for the input. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Hayden, I'll come back to you if you had uh, another question. Yes, um, so continue on the previous question. How is the eastbound go bus gonna get from the proposed bus base to the on-street stop at Macau? I can help with that again, I, Hayden. Yes, sorry, I was just gonna ask you. <laughs> yep, so um, for any eastbound buses, they would exit off uh, for one at Brimley, traveling south, to Brimley, making a left onto Triton, and then a north onto Borough Drive. If they wish to continue eastbound, what the buses will do is travel north onto Borough to progress onto Concilium, and then back onto the eastbound 401 ramp. But that will skip the Macauan on street bus stop. Is that correct? No, sorry, this is for the eastbound buses. Is that right, Hayden? Yes. They should continue to be serviced and definitely for the westbound buses as well. I can take your question and your comment back to our uh, bus operations team and ensure that they are serviced and maintained at McCowan Road. Yeah. I'll, grab your, I'll grab your email, Hayden, but um, uh, if it's okay, James, can we uh, have one more question from Hayden? Absolutely. Yeah, um, just Hayden? for information. Yes, the stop at McCowan is directly just north of the, you know, the bus entrance to Scarborough Town Center. And I, 
I would propose a suggestion is that instead of just having a bus space on the east side, you know, on the northbound lanes, to also have bus space on the southbound lanes of Borough Drive. So that's just making it easier for buses to turn. Uh, we we appreciate that. We will take that back for consideration. I don't know if we're at a point right now that we could add comment to that at all, but that is an interesting point. Um, um, just anything else? Uh, I'll go ahead, James. I was just going to ask that if there were no more questions within the Zoom room, we have a question that we have received outside of Zoom room. If I could ask kindly, if I could ask Nigel then to read his. Thanks, James. So yeah, so we, we took a moment to kind of go over some of the concerns people in the community may have as James and I are kids from Scarborough who grew up in the community. Uh, one of the questions that we did come up with was, uh, will TCC routes be updated to accommodate the longer time uh, of travel for Gold passengers from the new location to the point of connection? Sure. I guess that's that's probably a question for me. Um, so, would you mind just clarifying a little bit? So, you asked about um, the time for our buses to pick up Go customers. Do you mean like schedule-wise, or um, like to make those connections? Yes, that's that's what we were thinking of. Um, more so, the time between um, you know the drop-off from from someone leaving the the new location of the Go bus. Uh, to, to their time to come back over to the TTC terminal where they would need to connect uh, with, 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 a, with a route to get to their destination. So we were just wondering if there was going to be some sort of coordination to, to help folks um, who, who will need extra time to go between the two transfer points. Um, I, I can't speak to that precisely. Um, in terms of the connection time, uh, customers getting off the GO buses, of course, can grab one of the uh, eastbound TTC buses that will be serving the stop on Triton Road and then uh, just hop right into Scarborough Centre Station. But uh, in terms of changing the schedule time, um, if there are very specific connections that a lot of our customers are making, then, um, you know, we always welcome that feedback and, um, you know, our scheduling folks can, can work to try and um, adjust the buses as much as possible. Although, um, you know, most of our services we're very fortunate at Scarborough Centre are, are very frequent. So even if, um, you know, some of those connections change a little bit, uh, you know, we don't, we hope that our customers won't have to wait, um, you know, too, too long uh, to catch the next bus. I had one question that I'd like to ask Alexander as well. Do we have an idea for those of us that are around, live around the Scarborough Town Centre area, would you happen to have an idea, estimate, as to the number of extra buses that will be flowing through? Um, in terms of the buses that are going to be operating on the replacement service, um, we've done some early guesses, however, that is one of the things that we still are in public consultation for and we're actually conducting a survey right now about, um, you know, what routes our customers want extended. So it'll change a little bit, but um, roughly what we're anticipating is providing about uh, one bus every minute from our Scarborough Centre uh, to help provide the capacity that uh, the existing Line 3 does. Perfect. So, James, we also have some questions that are here. My name is Susan Walsh. I'm the Director of um, Community Engagement for GO in the City of Toronto with Metrolinx. We have some questions that are on our Metrolinx Engage board. So, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to um, jump in and ask some of those of our panel, please. One By is. One is, will there be shelters that um, we can wait in during cold weather? 
I think I saw some in some of the plans, but who knows? Norika, perhaps? Emery? Yeah. So right now we are working with um, the uh, neighboring property owners uh, to determine um, the space requirements for shelters. Um, I think it's Metrolinx's wishes to provide as much amenities as possible. We'll have more information on how much shelters we can provide with the detailed design. Of course, barring that uh, there's uh, space permits for it, so yes. While we're on that kind of subject, there's another um, person that wants to know if we'll have electronic signs to say when the next bus will be coming. Again, that's, that will be addressed in uh, detailed design. One of the uh, things we are pursuing is understanding the power connections that are required for this location um, and how, that we, how we can connect to those power sources. Um, and barring any limitations to that, we'll hope to facilitate and provide that information. Excellent. I'll to mention point, to our Susan. audience that we'll also be providing written answers to these questions that are written on Metrolinks Engage. So um, if somebody happens to have written uh, written and dashed because they found that something else got in their way tonight, which happens, um, they'll be able to find these answers there. We'll also be a copy of this uh, um, recorded show on Metrolinks Engage as well. Um, back to our Engage questions. How will we transfer from GoBus to local TTC um, if they are not in the same place? Is that a question for Alexander or is it a question for Anne and Up to you guys. Marie? <laughs> um, I guess. I'll put a TTC kind of, I guess, perspective first here. Sure. Um, so. As was previously mentioned in uh, the slideshow, um, we will still be maintaining stops in the area. So um, customers who are looking to transfer from Go and head to uh, Kennedy Station um, can grab the 43 Kennedy or the 21 Brimley uh, right from just around the, uh, the where the Go bus terminal will be. Customers who are looking for other routes uh, can walk through the mall and uh, access the Scarborough Center uh, station bus terminal um, through the mall. I got to tell you, walking through the mall is always a good choice for me. Um, expensive choice sometimes, but I tried mall walking until I realized that I was going to be full. Um, why not have buses serve the east side of Scarborough Town Center? I think it would be easier to have uh, access to the mall and connect to McCowan Road Station it could go up the ramp to progress, have a stop beside the driveway to the mall, then head to McCowan Station via progress, rangeway, and bush, um, bush beat. That's a simple question. Do you, do you mean to repeat any of it? Anyone? Thoughts? I can take that. I don't know if people uh, can hear. I think, uh, 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 Eureka spoke to this a little bit early in the presentation. Um, there are the bus stops on McCowan will uh, continue to remain. Uh, the McCowan uh, station itself, with the closure of the SRT, is not open, but uh, uh, certainly people that want to get off on uh, McCowan to be closer to destinations on the east side of the terminal uh, will have that opportunity. Thanks, David. To that point as well, um, the benefit of being located at Borough Drive is that we'd reduce the impacts to the existing land users and landowners on the east side of the mall. So thinking about uh, residential um, condos and townhomes that are located there and also the businesses that are located there too. The Borough Drive location um, is a little bit more vacant existing conditions. And then also to that point, uh, the traffic flow on Borough Drive is less heavy than it is on the east side of Scarborough Town. I just had another question. It's uh, a little bit related to the one that uh, Susan asked, the, the second last question. Um, it's talking about accessibility concerns, um, just in terms of sort of accessibility for those uh, um, that, you know, that are considering those as, you know, wheelchairs or people 
Uh, is there a, uh, is that one of the things that's going to be looked at as you advance the design? Thanks, David. I can uh, start with that and pass it to Anne Marie if there's any additional detail. For sure, accessibility and safety are key points of Metrolink's operations, and definitely we'll be working in detailed design to maintain accessible standards for our operations. Is there anything else to add to that for an answer? Or I'll have one last call, I guess, for any questions that may have been received late within the Zoom room. Um, I'm going to turn to the... Hayden said some, Hayden said some good okay. questions, so I'll see if he's got another one for us. Uh, Hayden, anything you wanted Thank to you. ask? Um, not, not really. I, I think as long as... Um, um, you got the routing right then, like consider all the possible routings and, and pick out the most efficient one. Yeah, and I've got the uh, I've got your uh, email, so I'll pass that on to uh, to get you a, a, a fuller response on that, uh, that question. Okay. Um, and uh, just I'll ask the the folks in the Zoom room again if there's any other questions. You can put it in the chat, and I'll unmute you if you'd like. Is there any way uh, to condense the uh, any way to condense the bus stops? I guess to make the 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 uh, bus stop area smaller. Maybe you could speak to sort of the need for those that that number of 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 stops. Um, the suggestion is maybe could you have five stops instead of six stops? Thanks, David. I could uh, start with that answer and pass it to Anne-Marie if there's additional detail. Uh, we're suggesting the provision of six GO bus bays, and this is consistent with what's being provided in the Scarborough Town Centre terminal today. So this helps maintain our existing levels of service as well as to plan for additional demand as ridership continues to grow at this key location. Um, what we can do in detailed design is look at ways to reduce the distances between each bay, so shrinking as much as possible the impact on the local uh, network and then also on the right turn lane. And Marie? Yeah, and also just to that, you know, recognizing that we are coming out of a pandemic, uh, we do recognize that service will rebound to, uh, in this area, not only rebound, but increase over time. So our 2031 projections, looking at just the population and employment in the area, we do recognize demand will increase. So we want to ensure that at minimum, we provision for the level of service that we have with the six bus base at uh, the current terminal, um, and we'll adjust service as necessary. Um, so I think starting at six is um, a conservative approach, given the demand that we anticipate. Thanks, Thank you. Marie. Uh, <laughs> just following on, on that question, um, uh, just will all the stops be occupied all the time? I think maybe just sort of speaking to how often there'll be a bus at, at that particular stop. I know the frequencies are quite. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Eureka, do you want to take that one? Yep, I can help with that answer first, David. Um, so what we're suggesting at this location is through service. Um, what it might look like at any given point in time is that up to five platforms can be used at once within a six minute buffer for GO Transit services. Okay, thank you. Are there any I, more I, questions? I've got uh, someone new, I, they're probably listening in on the, uh, the other, but uh, Anthony, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, Anthony, do you have a question? Hi there, just, listen, just listening in, but thanks very much, everyone. Great job. Okay, Anthony, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, are there any end ending comments from the panelists? James? Yes. Deputy Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I wanted just to, to add, um, to the questioning, um, I know the accessibility piece has been raised. I'm just wondering about improved lighting in the area. 
Additionally, I wanted to understand what, and I know that the question around safety, I'm wondering what are the safety um, enhancements that could be incorporated here? Um, I understood that from the comments earlier that the buses are arriving at um, 5 a.m. till 1.30 a.m. Is that, was that correct? That's yes. correct. Right. So I'm just wondering, um, uh, you know, um, the area itself, um, what are you proposing there and to, to enhance uh, the overall safety? The other question I have for you with respect to connecting with the Scarborough Town Center, um, you've indicated that uh, the riders and customers will have access to the town center. But what are the hours of operation of the town center? I mean, I know what they are. I'm wondering if you know what they are, and then will that connection be made with the Scarborough Town Center to ensure that people can actually gain access when it is not during the, their operational hours? Is there a discussion and conversation taking place relating to this? That's right. So maybe I'll, I'll take a first crack at that one. Uh, counselor. So in terms of lighting, we did do a site visit. So part of uh, the scope is additional lighting for the area itself. Um, in terms of the mall operating hours, I know it's COVID operating hours at 7 p.m. at closes. We are in discussions with Oxford Properties as we um, continue our engagement for this project um, to determine how we can improve that connectivity. Um, with uh, anyone tra transferring or walking through the mall. Currently, you know, it is a parking lot uh, where there are existing pedestrians that, you know, transverse through the parking lot as we speak. So it is something that we are considering part of the detailed design. And then maybe just to follow up on that as you talk about, you know, transferring and, and sort of um, people making their way through the parking lot. I'm just wondering, um, is there a proposal to create some enhanced uh, wayfinding to the door to the mall, for example? Is that part of the consideration? Yeah, so part of the scope, we'll be considering wayfinding um, uh, very much in and around the area, recognizing that there will be changes to the traditional connectivity. So that's definitely part of the scope. Fantastic. Thank you. Those are all the questions I had. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions or any comments from the panelists at all? None whatsoever. Okay. So as part of closing comments, I have a few things I'd like to go over. First of all, I want to thank everyone for actually taking the opportunity to be with us this evening. I want to thank our, our, our panelists. I want to thank our Deputy Mayor for his actual time, his interest, and his actual comments. I'd like to um, also express that this was a recorded meeting that will be posted. We entertain the opportunity of you sending questions in. We will also be sending out another notice to the condos informing them that the, that the meeting happened, but should they have actual questions that they could submit those through the Metrolinks website and as well submit their questions to Toronto East at metrolinks.com. Um, thanking everyone again for this opportunity and for the information that has been shared. Uh, please register on Metrolinks and Gage. And um, as well, good night, stay safe, and enjoy the mild weather. Thank you.